Hi, this is Mike with AskTractorMike.com and um, not everyone can afford a new tractor and if you're buying an older tractor and you go get parts for it, uh, you may be a little bit taken aback at how high they are, but there may be another option you might not know about and I'm speaking with Terry from the Tractor Barn. And we don't like to use the word salvage, but recycled or used parts may be available for some of the older tractors. Terry, your background is kind of in taking old tractors, taking the parts off of them and reselling them. That's right. I've been doing it 42 years. And, and uh, tell us, uh, there are tractor places that dismantle older tractors that are no longer fit to fix up and make those parts available. How do you find them? Well, there is an association called National Tractor Parts Dealers Association, and it is all across the nation, Canada, uh, Australia, everywhere. Uh, so you can get on their website and find uh, tractor salvages that will have the part that you're looking for. That's the easiest way. Um, otherwise you you have to call somebody like me that can give you information about yards that specialize in International or Alice or Massey or whatever. Because there are yards that do specialize in just specific brands and so if that's the case then that makes it easier and kind of narrows that search. Now, now your business, um, you're, you're probably a little less in salvage than you used to be, um, used parts. Um, you're, you're a Hendra dealer and, and, and you have lawn and garden and things like that but you still handle some some used parts. Yes. And, and what was your specialty when you were really actively uh, working? Ford. Ford was our main thing. And I, I don't think a lot of people understand that, that uh, folks that do that generally do have a specialty. You'll find a certain brand that they're comfortable with. So um, so if, if I'm wanting to find parts for, say, a, an old farm mall or, or an old, and, and I, I don't want to pay for new, right. uh, what, what, sh what should I do? Well, you can get on that website, but not all of the salvage yards are on that, you know. Uh, if you can find somebody like myself that's done it for a while they'll know the sources that are out there to help you find those. I had a gentleman call me just a while ago and he had a cub, a cub that was in 1954 and he wanted to put an alternator on it. Well I knew a guy that probably can tell him exactly how to do that you know. So if you can find somebody that has that information that can give you, uh, kind of hook you up, network you so to speak and then you can find the person that's going to know the answer. That's, that's one thing I've noticed is is uh, your your group of folks are, are really good to help. If, if you get a call from a brand that you don't you're not used to you know who handles that brand and you'll direct them there. Yeah usually that's the case you know there can always be you know something we run into you know like the gray market tractors and some things like that and they're a little harder to come up with but I do have some connections on those as well you know and one of them is in Las Vegas of all places <laughs> but I mean he's a great source and so in those ways you know we can usually find uh, people that are going to you know have if they don't have it they'll know who does have it you know what and, I mean and, and I don't know whether we ought to get into gray market tractors a lot of people may not know what that is some tractors have been brought into this country that were actually designed for a different market and they can be a little tricky and they're called gray market tractors they can be a little tricky to get parts for but you can get parts now the the, the one thing I want to ask you uh, from from your standpoint is there an etiquette for finding used parts I mean um, what what am I going to expect to pay for them uh, do I need to take my toolbox to take them off a tractor? They are going to be all. Uh, what's some advice you'd give from from the other side of the desk on how to deal with folks that are selling used parts? Well, it's not like it used to be. <laughs> you used to drive up in your truck and go down in the weeds and pull apart, and it isn't like that anymore. You know the the, the regulations on oil spills and antifreeze and all that's changed. So most yards already have the parts off. Most yards are big and they have lots of help and they, they actually have people that that's all they do all day long is pull parts and clean them and make sure they're good. So if that's the case you just go and and buy it. Um, now you'll go to some old old places you know that's been around family owned small businesses that you might go find your part but normally they're going to pull them you know as far as pricing that's tricky uh, because as you very well know aftermarket parts is huge so used to in the old days say a spindle was three hundred dollars for the OEM uh, you could get a salvage for 150 well now you can buy a brand new aftermarket for 150 so where does that put the salvage price? So that is a tricky thing. So if you find a salvage part like for a cub that is original, that 
um, is nice, like a grill, for instance, you might pay as much as you would for an aftermarket, but it's going to fit. You know, where an aftermarket might not fit just right because it came from China and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Are there times you look at the uh, used part and think that's better than what they're paying for a, for a new part? I have thought that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing that really blew, my, blew me away was um, water pumps. I ordered a new water pump and I could buy it cheaper than I could rebuild the old one. And that made me really sad. <laughs> and the old one, in my opinion, is better if it's rebuilt. If, if I'm fixing up an older tractor, uh, generally the, the original equipment, the OEM manufacturers have websites where I can get part numbers for them. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, and if a, lot, a lot of times on these older tractors, some of the parts will be discontinued. And then maybe that's my only option is to find, uh, uh, find a used part. How, how difficult is it getting on some of these older tractors to get parts? Very. It's getting very hard. I had a guy call me for a 706 diesel head, uh, which a 706 was probably built in the 70s. International. Yeah. It was a particular head that, uh, that I called about it, and 9 out of 10 of them are cracked. And they're real bad about cracking. So to find that with that casting number that's not cracked, it's very hard to do. And if you do, you're going to pay, pay, pay. Long and the short of it, if you're, if you're fixing up an older tractor and the part's not available from the original equipment manufacturer, get the part number and then, and then go on the website and I'll put a link in the description below and, and you can find local uh, used parts dealers and if they don't have it, uh, most of the time, most of them will direct you to the person uh, that, that, that has it and, and specializes in that brand. Anything else that folks ought to know? Well, I just think that, you know, they need to realize that the mom and pop salvage yards are, are few and far between. And what you're running into is the same thing as we are in every, every business now, is these huge conglomerates that are, you know, they, they own 15 yards, you know, all across the nation. And in some ways, that is really a benefit because if I call All States Ag, for instance, you know, if they don't have it in their Wisconsin store, they might have it in their Iowa store, you know. So that's an advantage. But it's also a disadvantage because you get a lot of, of variety and you get a lot of people that they may have expertise where they're at but not where you're at you know so when you buy something locally we know what you're doing because we're in your area you know what I mean mm -hmm. so they may deal with bigger tractors or smaller tractors or whatever and so in that maybe the people that you're talking to are not going to have the expertise that you really need and a lot of times what I have found with old tractors is you know the majority of the time it's an older person doing it because the new guys don't know how to work on them so you're gonna have an older guy that you know lived in a different world than we live in now and so all of that's kind of hard it's it's kind of uh, I don't know it's difficult and there, and there is a social aspect to going to a, a salvage yard and, and meeting is. the folks and, and I've I've never I've never done that the, you, you did you didn't take at least an hour to get out the door just just talking about tractors because we're all tractor people mm -hmm. that's true and it, and it's that way wherever you go you know uh, but it's it's still a different it's it's a different atmosphere so to speak Thanks, Terry. I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. Okay. Thank you. I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and share this video with other tractor enthusiasts. And if you have questions or comments, put them down below. We'll try to get back with you. Thanks for watching.